Kia ora, and here's the second part of this incredibly long video on this really tough question um, with the hyperbola and the asymptotes and the triangle. So go watch part one first. I'm not even going to try and catch up on what I've done. Where we got to is that we are trying to find the area of the triangle. And we got down to here. So the very useful thing from part B is that we were given a value for sine theta, which was 0.6. Right Now we don't want sine theta. We wanted sine of pi on theta. But these two things are the same. And I think even spotting that is, is pretty cool. So um, once we've got to there, we've got an expression for the area of the triangle. And up here, we figured out um, lengths OC and OD. So we need to substitute those in. And you can see from looking that we're going to get quite a nice kind of expression in down here. OK, so I get A is equal to 3 tenths of root 10. What did we have? Root 10 kx0 minus y0 over k minus 3 times root 10, um, this is for OD, so we've got kx0 minus y0 over k plus 3. So that simplifies quite well. That leaves me with 3 times this squared, and I've got a nice difference of two squares down here. So I look at that and I go, huh, I have no idea what to do next. And then we go back to the question. Um, so let's go right back to the start and see what we were asked to do here. So we've found the area of a triangle. And honestly, I think if you got that far, you've probably got a couple of marks. Um, and now we have to figure out what all, all this lambda stuff is about. So if you um, think about this point here, P, what we're saying is that we're moving, we're actually fixing point C rather than point P. And this unit here is going to be 1. And then we're saying, well, how long do we want to make this bit relative to the top bit? So that the triangle we've got here, now I'm drawing a huge mess, but we're trying to keep that triangle minimized. Okay, so yet again, hopping over to GeoGebra so that you can see it. Let's look at what's happening in there. No, let's not bother. I'm trying to keep this under half an hour. So we need to do something with this lambda. And the way that I thought about this, and there are there are better ways to think about it, but this was how I did it. As I said, here are my asymptotes again. We've got a point here, and we've got a point here. And we've got coordinates for those now. So I'm not going to do all of this bit, but I'm just going to give you the, the idea. We've got point P here, and this is 1. And this is lambda. So we want to get an expression for the area of the triangle that is in terms of lambda so that we can do dA by d lambda is equal to zero to minimize that area. So I thought about this with the idea of linear interpolation, which which sounds hard, but it's not. right? So I've got this point here, and I've got, got this point here. And you can think about us sliding up and down here as we change the value of lambda. But we can say that at point P, we're basically taking a weighted average of the other two points. And the coordinates, the coordinate for point P is going to be the x coordinate for point D plus, well, how far along am I? Well, I've gone lambda of the way and the total way is lambda plus 1. So it's going to be xd plus lambda over lambda plus 1 of the distance from c back to d. And if you work that through, you get xd 1 minus lambda over lambda plus 1 plus this. But you can see why I think this is a pretty bad question. Right? But the whole point of Friday is to push yourself to try and partly solve the questions. Okay, so hopefully, even if you're watching this bit and you're going, I never would have got that far, you might use this idea of going part way along a line um, in an easier question. So we've got xd here, and we've got 1 over lambda plus 1, and here we've got this. So what you can do next, but I'm not going to do it in this video, and I don't recommend it for most of you as a great use of your time in the next 24 hours, is that you can now take 
your coordinates and you can work that through. And then right near the end, you're going to use the fact that that point is sitting on the hyperbola. I'm going to show you the schedule now, and if you're going really well with this question, um, first of all, if you're going really well with this question, you're probably on track for an outstanding scholarship, and um, you're probably going to be able to make sense of the schedule. So the schedule uses this idea of linear interpolation as well. So it uses the ratio, and it gets this coordinate for x0, and it gets this coordinate for y0. And I got that far and I had real trouble with the next bit, but then the next idea is that that point is sitting on the um, hyperbola. But this line in here is pretty deceptive because that was quite a few lines of algebra. Okay, if you're watching this and you're from Dub C and you really want to pursue this question, um, send me an email and I can send you back all my messy work solutions. But the main reason for me taking 20 something minutes over this was to go over the building blocks that come up, up in this question. So let's just go back and look at those. Um, things that have come up in here are this over and over again is useful. Um, the idea of finding the area of a triangle and using Pythagoras to find the lengths. So there actually isn't that much conics content in this part of the question. There is a little bit more in part A and B. But as usual in scholarship, they're not going to be um, testing things that are way beyond level three. It's just the way that they do it. Okay, I'm going to stop talking at last. Thanks for watching if you've watched this far. Um, thank you, Lofty Dolphin, for sending in the question. And um, let me know if there are any last-minute things tomorrow if you're um, at Wellington College. Otherwise, good luck for Friday.